I'm Drew Stevenson. This is for my professional responsibility class. Here we're going to be talking about ABA Model Rule 6.3. I usually teach this near the end of the Conflicts of Interest Rules because this is about lawyers serving on the board of different um, legal aid clinics and uh, similar service organizations and what types of uh, situations can arise that can pose a conflict of interest to a lawyer in that situation. So let's dive in. Again, Model Rule 6.3 is about membership in a legal services organization. And 6.3a begins, a lawyer may serve as a director, officer, or member of a legal services organization apart from the law firm in which the lawyer practices. So if you get a question where it says the lawyer works and practices law with law firm A, but then is a member of or serves on the board of a local legal aid clinic, they would not be subject to discipline for doing that. That's what we have so far. Notwithstanding that the organization serves persons having interests adverse to a client of the lawyer. So for example, let's say you represent a big um, urban landlord who owns lots of apartment buildings, and you are also on the board of a legal aid clinic that has a landlord tenant unit and represents some of the tenants. So even though you represent the landlord who would be the adverse party for some of the clients of the legal aid organization, um, that would not put may, mean that you're subject to discipline. But 6.3a continues that you should not knowingly participate in the decision or action of the organization if uh, participating in the decision or action would be incompatible with the lawyer's obligations to a client under Rule 1.7. In other words, you're going to have to, uh, um, if you're aware of a conflict, for example, uh, the, the board is discussing doing something and you are aware that they're throwing resources at, at a case and one of your clients at your private practice is the opposing party, you don't have to resign your position, but you can't participate in the decision. You would have to recuse yourself or abstain from voting, maybe leave the room while they're discussing it and so forth. Let's move on to section B of model rule 6.3. A lawyer shall not participate in the organization's decisions or actions where the decision or action could have a material adverse effect on the representation of a client of the organization whose interests are adverse to a client of the lawyer. This is sort of a mirror image of section A. In other words, the concern here is you have someone who is on the board and there's a decision that would benefit the lawyer's clients, but would potentially harm the legal interests of some of the constituents or clients that the organization is trying to help. And again, in those cases, the lawyer would need to abstain from participation in the decision or recuse herself. Now that we've talked about the basic provisions of the rule itself, it's time to talk about some of the highlights from the ABA's comments to this rule. I'm going to focus on the parts of the comments that I think you could end up seeing in a multiple choice test question on the MPRE or on my exam. So let's go back to the comments. Comment one to rule 6.3 says, a lawyer who is an officer or a member of such an organization does not thereby have a client lawyer relationship with persons served by the organization, but there is potential conflict between those helped and the interests of the lawyer's own clients. This is a pretty technical point, but because it's specific, it could show up as a multiple choice question on the MPRE. The mere fact that a lawyer serves on the board of a, let's say, legal aid clinic does not mean that every client of the clinic is a client of every lawyer who happens to serve on the board. Instead, you're enough steps removed from providing representation that you, as a board member, do not have a client-lawyer relationship with each of the individuals that the organization helps or provides representation for. Moving on, the comments note that um, sometimes you have to reassure a client. I think this is pretty rare that the clients being helped by an organization would even be aware of who the board members are. 
but there could be cases where it's necessary to reassure the organization's clients that the representation they receive will not be adversely influenced by members of the board. And then it goes on to say, just for this in writing up front, established written policies in this respect can enhance the credibility of such assurances. In other words, it's best for the organization to have such a policy in writing so that on the rare occasion when a client asks about it and says, wait a second, you have somebody on your board who represents the opposing party in my case, they can say, no, 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 here's our policy and that board member will have no direct influence on the representation that we provide. That concludes our discussion of this particular rule. Stay tuned for a video about the next rule in our series as we learn the ABA model rules of professional conduct.